live! Hey guys! Welcome back to my channel. This is Tita Lavinia of Tita's of Pageantry. And for this episode, let's have a bit of a change. Let's not talk on our own. Let's include someone with face value. Someone who I feel you need this rainy afternoon. I am talking about the handsome Jack Titus, Mr. Gay World Nevada. Good evening. Good afternoon for me. Good evening, Jack. Uh, yeah, mabuhay, mabuhay. Yeah, it's my night time here. It's evening right here and your it's their time, right? That's right, Jack. I know you're representing Nevada, but where are you right now? Uh, right now, I'm in Las Vegas, Nevada. Yes, right. You are in Nevada. All right. <laughs> we are super excited. I read a little bit about you, but not enough for me to get to know you. So we want to get to know you because this is very new in my channel. I usually interview the women of pageantry. This is the first time that we're having someone wow. as handsome as you on this channel. Please introduce yourself for everyone. Wow, first of all, thank you so much for having me tonight. Yeah, and I'm um, Jack Titus. I was born in Thailand, and right now I'm 29 years old. I'm studying for the medical assistant in University of Nevada, Las Vegas, and I'm represent Nevada, yes. Very interesting. Now, I know you're tall. You're six foot one. Is that yes. right? Yeah, I'm six one. All right. Are you all Thai, or do you have any other <laughs> ancestry? I am all Thai. Yeah. I, I did to say that. Yeah, 100% Thai. Yes, right. Very, very interesting. So growing up, um, what was it like for you growing up? Because now you're representing Nevada, but your childhood, did you spend it in Thailand? Wow, I need to say back then in Thailand, my life is like so tough. Because, oh, okay. yeah, you can like imagine 10 years ago, right? When I was in like uh, secondary school, in high school. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I have no friend at all because I'm being a gay. Then I got bullied I every uh, single day. And back then they didn't open same like today, right? Yeah, back then eh, anyone like still like don't open same like today. So I have really, really hard time back then. Yeah, I have like no friend, not 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 even one year, not at all. I want to ask more about your childhood and about being gay. Um, of course, in this part of the world. Asians are known to be, you know, very, very um, discreet about sexuality. But I will talk to you more about that later on. Okay, Thank yeah. you so much for sharing. But, you know, it's very interesting because I checked your Instagram and, you know, of course, I know what works on social media. So whenever you take off your shirt and you put on your stethoscope and it's like, social media gold for everyone to see someone so sexy with a medical career so medicine the field of medicine is this something that have interested you for a long time ever since you were a kid how did you get into this uh yeah i i need to say that like back then when like my mom my friend my family they get sick right uh when i was a kid i always like pretend i'm a doctor to help oh. the people yeah like when i was okay. a kid already and i have a dream like yeah i want to do that if one day i have like opportunity to help the people i'm gonna study for it yeah and go for it yeah so let's say yeah i have a, this one when i was a kid already yes Jack, you must be very smart because i mean i'm not just saying this to flatter you it's one thing to dream about going into medicine it's another to pursue medicine because you have the mental capacity <laughs> yeah. to study medicine so you're very lucky um you're good looking and then you have the brains so i mean again this isn't only social media gold in pageantry this is something that gives substance to a candidate so mm -hmm. you know um being in the field of medicine in this time of the pandemic yes right do you feel the weight or the importance of your community in the larger community yeah i feel that like when i'm start to study for this one scene like pandemic is like not happened yet right but actually it's happened but in asia not in usa yet and then when 
it's happened in my state, in my city, it's getting like it's really worse because right here in USA, if you if you saw the news, we have a lot of case, right? We don't even have enough like hospital, right. yeah. yeah, and everything stuff like that. So they let the uh, someone who like still study go to the real one to see the real care to help the people life, yeah. And um, at the first time, I'm so excited. I'm so excited for that. But when I um, jump to that, I know already I need to save a life. So I think I did a good job back then. But right now, I think everything is like getting better right here. Jack, um, I just have an additional question to this. Uh, of course, a lot of us watch um, medical series or TV shows about doctors. When you were in the middle of helping out everyone because of the pandemic, because of your line of job, is it very similar to what we see on TV? Uh, I think the feeling when yeah when you watch right the feeling I think is gonna be the same because you don't not you don't like gonna see anyone like have like some pain or they gonna die or whatever in front of you right you're gonna try your best to save the life here. Yeah. So the feel the, the feeling that it evokes maybe yeah. not the intensity but the feeling that it evokes I see. Yes right. So I mean I was just wondering do doctors and people in the medical field laugh at these TV shows or <laughs> I mean if they feel like oh I can relate to this because this actually happens. Uh -huh, yeah right yeah when I like back then when I watch I also think it's going to be the same thing but when I am jumping to it right yeah Totally, yes. I mean, I know that your line of job is very difficult, but do you feel also a sense of pride that you took um, a path towards medicine and now it is even more so needed in the whole world? Yes, right. Yeah, like seeing pandemic is happen, right? I think like in the medical fields career, I think all over the world, we need that, yeah. So it's very important, but I'm so great. Like right now, all of us, we know how to clean the hand, how to protect okay. yourself. Yeah, like back then. I know we got crazy yeah. with alcohol. I, I, I like have everywhere and then yeah, another right. one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just protect yourself. So right now I'm like, okay, at least like, yeah, you know how to protect yourself. Yeah, how to clean your hand and like, yeah, be aware with everything. No. Of course, my thinking is that when we see it on social media, medical practitioners, the nurses, the staff, the doctors, they're also very, very exhausted. <laughs> but I want to ask you, how do you find time in preparing for a pageant in the middle of your studies, in the middle of your medical responsibilities? It's a little crazy, chap. You got to explain this to us. I know. I like this question because like it's really hard for me to manage my time about the pageant and what it am study for the medical. So okay, I need to say mostly my time I'm study in the daytime and it's gonna until at night PM at night, right? And my pageant is gonna start from nine until like 1 a.m., 2 a.m., yes. But sometimes I need to, like, I need to study how to walk, yeah, learn how to walk, how to answer the question, have a photography, the video like that. I need to manage it. But I think I did a good job because, like, the pageant is my dream. It's one of my dreams. Yes, okay. so no matter how tired, I'm happy to do that, yeah. But I didn't feel like I'm really tired, but I just feel like, okay, I'm getting closer, closer to my dream already. You know what? Thank you for answering this because this definitely shattered all of my um, like preconceived notions about pageantry. Uh, I have covered beauty pageants for a long time. Mm -hmm. Very seldom. I've covered male pageants, gay pageants, yes, but it's very rare that I get to have an opportunity to really pick their brain because usually I'm only allowed maybe two questions or three questions so i i actually want to understand the mindset it's very refreshing for me to understand that you're a doctor i mean you're studying to be um a doctor or a medical uh, medical assistant medical assistant you're yes. studying that takes up a lot of 
uh, your time and brain space. But then you tell me this is actually your dream. So it makes it easier for me to understand that, you know, even corporate people who are super busy can go into something so frivolous or something so seemingly insignificant as a beauty pageant or a gay pageant. So, yeah, kudos for you for pushing for your dreams. I mean... That's right, because I believe that like all the humans, we can do more than one thing at the same time. And you can still do yeah. it. Yeah, right? If you have a your dream, just follow, for, just follow your dream. And I think like I can do a good job in a bold way. It's nice. It's nice. And it's also nice to hear that this is something that you decided on your own. That not because you're tall and you move around the space looking fabulous as you are. And that not because you were scouted. Not because somebody pushed you, but because you like this. Mm -hmm. This is the thing you said. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Interesting. Very interesting. Now, um, going, going into pageantry, how did you come to represent Nevada? So it has to be uh, statewide first, right? Yes, right. Yeah. But back then, it's like a uh, pandemic is happening, right? Then uh, all the Asian, right here in USA, we got like a trap by the people like Asian head, right? It's a similar time of when I joined to the Mr. Kewo Nevada. So I answered the question. That's why I, I got the <laughs> Yeah. But what about in Thailand um, when you were there? Were you also active in pageantry or modeling perhaps? Yeah, back then in Thailand, it's always my dream. And I didn't have any opportunity. I don't have any chance. Yeah, to join in any pageant yet, but I think on this time is my right time already. I'm ready for it. Yeah, I'm always like dreaming, thinking about it. All of my friends they know that they like to give me okay, check answer the question. <laughs> like when I watch like Miss Universe, you know, if like Steve Harvey asking you the question, okay, I try like okay, how I can answer that. Okay, so your interest in pageantry really rooted in. Beauty pageants such as Miss Universe, Miss yeah, World, Miss, Earth. Yeah, Miss, Miss Earth. Earth, I see, Miss International. Okay, I understand now. So, okay, it's very exciting because I feel like we are in the middle of the golden age. Philippines is doing really well. Thailand is doing really well in pageantry, not just in um, counting crowns, but in production, in preparations. Uh -huh. So I, I want to know with you, Jack, um, can you tell us more about Mr. Gay? And I don't know if this is something that you can answer. Is it because you're in Nevada that you are representing Nevada or would you have represented Thailand? Uh, I represent Nevada, yeah. Everything I do for the IBA volunteer and everything, I am trying to call out for the, the LGBTQ who live in Nevada. But my goal, I just don't, if I have a bigger voice already, right? I just don't want to call for the people who live in my city. I want to call out, yeah, for like, or even like in Philippines, in Thailand, in all over the world. Because I know that I live in Thailand, in Asia before, and I moved to here. I, I see and I saw a lot of difference between like equality, yeah. How they treat people, same sex married. Yeah, you got bullied by your friend and you're being a gay, stuff like that. So, yeah, but I try my best to balance between like right here and like global. Yeah, if I have a chain, I need to help the global. Well, it's always nice to have a balance of like a Western outlook in keeping your um, Asian roots and traditions and yeah, culture. right, right. So, I mean, otherwise we will all be stuck. We will not move forward. So, Jack, tell us more about um, Mister Gay World. Because the goal eventually is to move to Mr. Gay World. Um, mm -hmm. Can you give us a little bit of a background about this competition? Okay, yeah. Uh, the Mr. Gay World, right, is a platform for LGBTQ, which are the platform to call out about the like, HIV equality and stuff like that for the LGBTQ in the world. Yeah, and we got a lot of country right now to join on Mr. K World competition already. Even like some country by the law, they don't even allow you to be a gay. Yeah, but right now I'm so happy. Like even like many many years, we got more people 
who come and join on this pageant. Yeah, I'm so happy for that. And I think if I'm not wrong, this one is for the gay people. We don't have that much for the pageant to join to the platform to call out. Right? I think this one must be one and only. But I'm not sure yet because. My dream is win to Mr. K World. That's why I already laser and everything for the. Yeah, like you just focused on Mr. K World. Just focus on it. Yeah. I was like that. Um, whenever I would have a job, because there would be other job offers, I would just focus on this one job. Otherwise, yes. I end up jumping from one job to another. Yeah, I don't want to lose. But okay, let's focus on that note. Just yes, focus. true. Yeah. So, Jack, how important is this representation for you? Because this time is really very different. Number one, we have the pandemic. Number two, you are a medical practitioner. Three, you are Asian. Asians this time around, they're very controversial. We are facing a lot of discrimination, especially in the U.S. It has been well documented. Why is this important right now? Instead of being safe, instead of being silent, instead of blending in with the crowd oh yeah i think everything is must come like together but for me i'm studying for the in the medical fields right then i'm joining to represent my state for the mr k world usa and i believe that i have like potential what i learned from the school i can help like these people in the pandemic yeah even like uh keep the vaccination or just let them know like how to protect yourself yeah if you have um someone who hits all the marks mm -hmm. that's very yes, important right. in the discussion of everybody because you're there you're a medical practitioner you're asian you're gay yeah. this, these are all of the things that people are talking about and you are the epitome of that person you are yes, in right. the middle of the discussion so um it's life easier for you because people are talking about the causes that you're passionate about or is life more difficult for you uh i don't think it's not that easy but it's not that like uh, difficult because like first of all i'm so proud to being a gay to being an asian and i'm just be the one who like are uh, joining on this usa competition who being an asian yeah so i am proud to represent like asian culture yeah, because you you must know right, like Asian culture, right. you must have a hard time about family to coming out. You are gay, yeah, and stuff like that. But I want to show the world like what we have in our blood. Very interesting. So, yes, um, you opened up about coming out in Asia and being gay in Asian. How was that like for you? I mean, did you always know you were gay or? Was it something that, I mean, your family knew because sometimes you know, right? Uh -huh, yeah, like, okay, let's say when I was a kid, right? I just think like when I look at the man, like, oh, wow, he's so hot. Okay. But I'm still so young. I didn't know this one is called gay, right? Then I think like, I'm just a like, normal guy, same like my classmate, but I don't have any friends. Then I'm like, relate to myself, like, why I don't have any friends? What the, do I look like different? No, I'm not look different with you i'm look the same i'm a man yeah and then you know i don't have any friend i have a hard time right until i try to stop to being a gay and i try to like to kill myself yeah to like enough other problem just killing myself yeah i tried that before and then i still got that scar with me until okay. now yeah and yeah when i grow up and I realized that I have to accept myself. No matter you are gay, you matter you are state or whatever. You, if you do a good thing, good thing will come to you. And I'm so happy. My family, when I come out with my mom and my dad, they so like really support me. Even until now, I join for the gay pageant. Yeah, they still support me. Like very, really, it's very big supporter for me in my life. So, Jack, I just want to understand more about this because. When I study about um, like behaviors in countries that are near each, each other, the Southeast Asian countries, I do know for a fact that Thailand is more open to the LGBTQ community. 
did this um, make your life a little easier being a gay child or uh, is it because you're more secretive about it yeah like back then is and uh, like 10 years ago they didn't open like today yeah and in my school i don't think we have a lot of gay so I'm gonna be someone who like different from them and yes, must be yes. hard for me. Yeah, but I think the younger generation of LGBTQ right now in Thailand, they must have like more easier than my generation. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, but like technically, I wanna say that you think about Thailand, we like open for it, right? Right, right. But we still cannot do same-sex marriage. When, oh, okay. Yeah, transgender, they look like. The transgender beauty, uh, lady boy from Thailand, they always look like beautiful, right? Yeah. Right, right. But in the passport, when they go to another country, it's okay. still Mister. Okay, so, so it's yeah. the same as us. Okay. It's yeah, I think all of like all of in Asian must be the same. Only Taiwan, right? Yeah, can marry it already. But I think like that is not fair because like we are human, we deserve like their own happiness, right? Yeah, no matter they are gay or not, but if they want to share the gender, why not, right? I see. Okay, so <laughs> this is something that I also understand, at least the sentiments, because we have the same um, issues here in the Philippines. In the Philippines right? Okay. Right. So this isn't foreign to me. This is something that I have encountered. Mm -hmm. So if we could go back to your childhood, if we could go back to your teenage years, what is it that you wish you knew that could help you in your life right now? Because, you know, when we are kids, some people, they hide things from us. They mm -hmm. don't want us to learn about, you know, other things in life. But what is it that you wish you could have learned early? For me, I'm going to talk to myself, like, just being yourself, like, accept it. Yeah, no need to hide yourself from anyone and... In the end, the result is going to be perfect and like successful in your life if you do a good thing. So you don't need to lie to yourself. No need to lie to your friend or your family. Whatever you be, I just want you to be that kid in like a happy kid, like normal kid. Yeah. I, I want to throw this question for you. This is not part of the list, but maybe we can edit this if you have a hard time. But... <laughs> Do you believe that humans should at least uh, experience rejection, the hard feelings before they go into acceptance? Because I was thinking, if I am a gay child, do I want an easy gay childhood? Or do I want to experience the heartbreak? hiding in classrooms being bullied do i want to go through all of the stages or do i want an easy path to coming out what are your thoughts jack yeah like uh for me from my opinion i think i'm the way and i don't want the easy way because i want to learn from the pain like i want to learn from my own experience if like back then if i'm easy to go with the gay right maybe today i'm not gonna stand here to represent nevada and like want to call out about the equality about lgbtq stuff like this yeah because i know that i have a hard time before it's very really hard to let people accept you even you accept yourself so i think if i learn from my experience here yeah, so i got that i know the feeling what okay. what the feeling is that it's like a vaccination you have to go through it yes right I, yeah, yeah. Sometimes yeah. I, I, I wonder, do I want that? Do I want like, uh, oh, great, I got through this. <laughs> yeah, I just want I didn't even say like, if your life easy, it's not fun. I You're not going to learn anything in your life. Right. Yeah, right. You can learn Thanks. from the school. Yeah, you cannot learn from someone telling you. You have to learn by your own experience. Right, right. Makes sense, makes sense. You know, Jack, I want to move into something a little serious, but lighter this time, because I want to talk about relationships this time. We are in the middle of the pandemic, and under normal circumstances, I don't think I would have had the chance to meet you. Mm -hmm. But now we have technology. I am able to meet you like this. I am able to even meet 
the likes of Pia Wurzbach or even Catriona Gray. But I think in normal life, we wouldn't be able to, you know, talk to each other. But technology has given us a way to communicate, to meet people, even to hook up. I want to know, because I'm very polite, I don't usually ask these things. Um, there are so many websites and applications right now for hooking up. For meeting people, maybe because a lot of people are lonely, maybe because a lot of people think that might as well use technology to find someone. But how can people protect themselves? I mean, we're still using technology that is artificial. We're still using technology wherein we can't really get to know the person. But how can members of the LGBT community as well as regular people protect themselves and their hearts from new technologies that are rising up. Mm, yeah, like uh, in the age of technology, right? I believe that we should like don't give our information. You have to okay. give you, yeah, your privacy too. And right now we have a lot of website, a lot of application. You can like, uh, like you say like hook up or stuff like that. First of all, I, I don't want you to tell all your personal stuff. And right now we got a lot of like scammer because I know that the financial all over the world is like getting worse because of pandemic, right? Okay. Yeah, and okay, don't give your personal stuff. Don't give your like bank account stuff like that. So if you want to know someone, let's talk until you trust each other. You, like the time no need to be large. Yeah, you can just like get slowly, slowly learn from each other because I believe that the technology, we have a knowledge. You can learn a lot of things. Like you said, you can meet a people you never meet before in your life. You can learn like even right now, the all the class, right? They have study by Zoom online and stuff like that. So I think like we have a good way if you bring yourself to the right situation. Yeah, and you don't forget to protect yourself. Yeah. When you sign up for the website, you have to read everything first for the rule before you give your information. I mean, it adds to your paranoid factor, right? If, mm -hmm. if you want to just go with the flow, that's fine. But if you want to do your research, it's the best way to go about yeah, it. That's that's right. yeah. yeah, because right now, like when you go to Facebook, Instagram, you can you can spy on someone so easy, like what time they check in, in which restaurant, what they like to eat. Where they like to go, okay, yeah, right. like that. You have get to... to know at least a feel of the person if this is. Mm -hmm. But you're not completely shutting down the idea of finding love online. Yes, right. I'm not shutting down. I believe that, like my soulmate, still are still out there. <laughs> yeah, still out there. One day I, I will got it. <laughs> you're still out there, um, because you are a handsome man. I don't know of your availability. I am not even going to ask, but I want to know what are the characteristics that draws you to a person? For me, right? I, I say, I need to say that I'm a perfectionist. Right. Okay. Yeah, like, yeah, <laughs> when I want to do something, like, I have a lot of passion mm -hmm. to go and do it. I, I want to do everything, like, it's best of I can do that. Yeah, but I know myself, I don't like it. Sometimes it's like, make me like paranoid and panic because you cannot control everything in, your, in the world. Right. Like what yeah, right. you have to let it grow, let it grow, yeah. Let me talk to you about your character. What are the things you like? Because anyway, we've already told everyone you're available. Might as well give them what they're up for. So uh, what are the things that you do? Like, what are your hobbies? What are, what are the things that you do for fun, apart from preparing for a pageant? Uh, well, I need to say I don't have a lot of time to do something. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like my schedule is like, wow. But when I, I have a time, I like to watch a movie. Yeah, mm -hmm. like Netflix, yeah, stuff like that. And I can say if I go to the gym, is that a hobby? Oh, yeah. Because, I mean, yeah, because, yeah, yeah, when I got like something stressful about my class, about my exam, about my test, just like, push it. Right? I mean, <laughs> yeah. some people would go into like uh i don't know breaking things for stress relief yeah, but i, I understand i, I want to do that too but i i don't know where they have in last week huh? yeah, like okay. throw something right break the I think, they do. I think i saw it in like one of the tv sitcoms maybe you should look it up 
Yeah, I don't know. They have like, yeah, no. yeah, but when I'm like get stressful or something, I like to go to the gym and like take it out. Well, it's even more productive if you go to the gym because you get to hit two birds with one stone. Your fitness for the pageant gets a big check. So yeah, that's right. <laughs> and it shows. And um, Jack, once everything settles down, once everything is normal, once everything is okay, if you post it on social media, what's the first? cool thing you're going to buy or the thing that you're going to pursue once everything is back to normal okay when everything is back to normal first thing i'm gonna buy i'm gonna buy the ticket and go back to thailand to visit oh. my family my parents because since pandemic is happened it's been two years already i didn't give like get a hug from my mom my dad my parents yeah we didn't meet in person we just talk like by facetime stuff like that so i want to get a feel warm from my family again yeah, that's what I'm going to do in the first thing. So, um, when is your competition and what type of support can we expect from your parents knowing that they're super far away from you? Uh, I need to say that even I um, live here, represent Nevada, right? But my national costume is from Thailand. I have to ship from Thailand. Everything, yeah, everything is from Thailand. The designer from Thailand, everything is from Thailand. Because I have a lot of Thai people who support me. Even like right now on my Instagram, I have a lot of message every single day from the Filipino. Yeah, they say like fighting for it. So I have a lot of supporters from the Asian. That's why I'm being proud and like I'm ready to call out and let the people in the world they know what we have in Asian brand. Very nice. I mean, it's one thing to compete. It's another to feel the support that you're not fighting alone. And good thing that you opened this because i heard you can confirm this that one of your trainers at least for q a is of course the beautiful palin suda druin how did this collaboration start wow uh first of all i need to say i'm a big fan of Pavita suda okay you know, yeah. yeah she is my how to say that role model my pageant role model from thailand because she she's a fighter she joined a lot of like pageant a lot of competition before she get the crowd from Miss Universe Thailand yeah then every single year when she go back right she be a best best version better be better oh. and yeah first of all I'm a fan first and after that uh on that day in Clubhouse you know Clubhouse right the application oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah. She, she opened the Clubhouse and I say hey Fasai I'm Jack Titus remember my name one day <laughs> I had a call to Mr. K World USA and oh my God. to be my coach. Then you know after that, like after, <laughs> yeah, after we become like trainer, she my teacher already when we talk, she asked me like, Wow, that day, how come you can just tell me like remember your name? <laughs> yeah. I like it because that's like so decisive. It's it's better than a pickup line. Yeah, right. If I say okay, I want you to train me like that is normal. Maybe she's gonna forget me, right? But if exactly. I say remember, remember. Right us, yeah. That's very smart because I will definitely remember. I mean your name is I don't know if I can say this. It's it's a really effective porn name if I can say it. But <laughs> the, the recall is just precious. So yeah, if I were Pasai, I would Definitely, definitely. Yeah, remember, I yeah. her like, okay. And the first time when I told you, you really remember me. She said, of course. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. nice. How's the training like? Um, at least for with with Pasai. Yeah, it's going good because this one is my first pageant. I didn't join any pageant in my life. Yeah, but I'm just the fan. But and when I watch, even Miss Universe stuff like that, I just think like, you just go to the catwalk and walk. After that, evening crowd, swimsuit, answer the question. That's it, you're going to get the crowd so easy. But when I jump here, when I start to learn with RL from the Philippines, with fast side and everything, it's not that easy. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's, um, we had Bini Bini Pilipinas a few weeks ago, and uh, one of the questions for Meiji Cruz, one of the candidates, um, had something to do with the athletes who will be competing um, at the Olympic. Acknowledge that uni pageant contestants are like athletes. There definitely is science and technicalities that are involved in standing up and walking and even thinking of how you frame your thoughts in your head before you say it so yeah that's yeah. nice 
Well, I realized that like it's not easy like what I thought, and I learned yeah I learned a lot. She she teach me, she taught me a lot of thing. Yeah, not even just Q and A, but like like total total look yeah and everything. Yes. Very interesting. So, um, how is your pageant preparation coming along? Um, you mentioned that your wardrobe um or some aspects of your wardrobe uh, are still in Thailand, but what? are the things you feel you are strong in and what are the things that you feel you need more work at uh for me i'm the one who like to learn i'm always like learning something new every day but if the final competition is coming tomorrow i'm ready for that yeah i still got three months to go but right now in my house i got my national costume i got my evening uh, the suit and evening crowd like that. I'm I'm ready. I can just buy the ticket and fly to Florida for tomorrow. Wow! <laughs> but have you checked your competition, Jack? <laughs> yeah. And how do you feel? Sorry, what do you say? How do you feel about the competition so far? Uh, I'm so excited to see my like uh, my brotherhood because I believe that like we come from fifty state, right? Anyone they represent one state each, they must be have something, they must have potential, and I cannot wait to see like all of my brotherhood. I think we're gonna become a good friends for sure. Uh, when is Mr. Gay World USA, and where will it be held? Uh, Mr. Gay World USA is gonna be in Fort Lauderdale in Florida. It's okay. on fourteen November this year. Oh, you still have, you definitely still have the time, but if you are this confident and you're this conversant, I don't think you will have any problems. Have you checked out your strongest competition? My strongest, right? I think because everything for me, Jack Tai Hat is strong. No one going to be like same like me. I'm a unique person. I'm just be like, I like that. Only, yeah. I like that. So I'm going to be myself. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. I'm definitely going to root for you. So, Jack, I'm going to wrap this up. I know you're tired. You've had a long day. But what I want to really ask from you is what do you wish to achieve through this representation? We have heard it many, many times from the beauty pageant queens. I want to be the voice. I believe. I want to do this. I want to do that. But you are in the moment. Like what I said earlier, you are gay, you are Asian, you're in the field of medicine. You matter in this time. Why is it important for you to represent this and what do you wish to achieve? Uh, so for, for me, I want to be the one who be an like, uh, inspiration and role model for the younger generation of LGBTQ. No matter they are like Asian or not, but I know if you are LGBTQ, when you was a kid, you must have a hard time for sure because you don't even know yourself. You don't even like have someone to talk to, like you are gay, you are normal or whatever, right? The inspiration if someone who was born in Thailand, just ordinary guy like me. Right now, I'm standing here in USA to represent Nevada. If normal guy like me can do it, I think I can inspire the people. Just follow your dream. Whatever you dream, just do it. And you're going to be successful in your dream if you work on it that hard enough all right well said thank you thank you so much jack and um thank you for giving me the opportunity i also want to thank sir bricks of sash factor international for arranging this i wouldn't even have the chance to get to talk to someone like jack titus guys um if you have to please uh, jack let them know how they can support you how they can follow you if there are any voting mechanics out there let them know um okay yeah first of all thank you so much for having me tonight and your guy even from the philippines or from all over the world if you want to support me just follow on my instagram i can update everything i do right there is the name is jack Tata, same right my name you saw it right now on the screen yeah and facebook also same name and youtube also same name every, every platform is same name yes so i gonna update right there and i believe that is coming soon it's gonna have the popular word like people choice yeah and i'm gonna put the link and update you guys know in my instagram and thank right. you for recording me thank you yeah. <laughs> you can speak thai too <laughs> well, you learn a little bit in the pageantry world you have the thai fans you have the latin fans you pick up a word or two <laughs> yeah right like i can say like Mabuha, Philippines. Exactly. <laughs> i was seeing that <laughs> thank you so much Jean.